Hi there and welcome to episode 89 of the ADHD Adults Podcast. I'm James Brown and as usual I'm joined by human Campbell, Dr. Alex Connor and human Borlake, Mrs. ADHD. Alex, hi. You're obsessed with your balls, James. There's a na- science <laughs> name for that, what that is. Thanks, Al. And Mrs. ADHD, hi. hi. Well, can I... I mean, I didn't even finish the question you then. You had it in my head. Okay, so in your head I had. Brilliant. Um, it takes ages, doesn't it? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I just, Alex, just do How you, are you? Jesus. Alex, just do your bit, please. <laughs> Very well. Thank you, Sam. This is a reminder that we started the podcast because team science again. But I had a fever dream where one person asked for more personal reflections and bonus content. And we've... <laughs> Yeah, I like it when you do this, James. Change the script, haven't you? And we have time for next one because I can't now hunt people in the woods because of my pathetic knee. James is too busy doing really successful and massive talks. Sam's here as well because she's dead thick. (laughs) I would say not as verbose, flowery as normal, James, but I liked it. And, you know, it's not inaccurate. So, yeah. I just, I just thought I just I didn't have time. I thought I'll just put the facts in. Let, let's speak to the facts. Anyway, this group of three people who walk shoulder to shoulder in IKEA, so you can't get past for five minutes. Which, when your oh. timeline feels like fifteen years of a podcast, Jeez, yes, is also, is also a tragedy in three parts. That's that happened. It happened on Saturday. We'll discuss oh. how the week between podcasts has been from our perspectives as people with ADHD, um, and also as people in the ADHD community. We'll answer some questions from that community. So remember to send your questions in, particularly via Discord. And then we'll finish off by expanding on this week's theme, which was how to talk about your ADHD or something like that. So as always, as usual, I'll probably ask you two how you are, how your week's been, and you'll fucking ignore me. So um, let's start with Sam. How's your week been? Um, I can't remember. I don't, I don't know how it's been. Um, I feel good today. So I can't imagine that I've ever felt any other way or that I ever <laughs> will feel any other way but good so yeah good how about you me yeah oh okay oh Sam what are you doing that's the I'm whole sorry. shtick gone if we ask James if oh, sorry James how do. about you Al I'm good you're describing cognitive flexible thinking which mm. is a form of creativity you. that we're worse at than the general population which I find interesting so not just you <laughs> Mine's good. Cheers. Yeah, let's not let's not ask James. We'll have to hear about it as well. Um, yeah, I bought an electric bike impulsively that was not oh. cheap, and because no, I can't because of my knee. No, no, it's a mountain bike for going <laughs> for going through the woods. <laughs> and, it's yeah. faster. Oh, it's no. faster. <laughs> <laughs> see, actually. <laughs> yeah, it, that is literally true. Oh god! And I bought some field glasses as well, the binoculars, that so I can look at. I've seen my first woodpecker. Pray. Big... <laughs> no, you can't can't shoot them. What what they, was it you saw? I didn't catch that. Your first woodpecker. Woodpecker, because you hear them all the time. But I, I looked at where they are. Ooh, I went online to find out where they it. live, and I've got yeah, I've got a book. I saw it, <laughs> and it's, it was lovely. I've got a red, the black and white with like a red. Yeah, de- no, yeah. yeah, they live in dead trees. Not, I, I was looking in the wrong place. Um, that hang that on, is, they live in I'm, dead I, trees. Yeah, yeah. So the, 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 the you know that thing, and and uh, the first day I could hear them, couldn't see them, and I said to myself, "Oh, bloody woodpeckers!" And not thinking that it sounded like Woody Woodpecker. That isn't just um, relevant to. I have, I have interest. I kind of feel like Alex's dream is to turn the Thursday episode into a bird watching podcast. Because he's increasingly talking about the birds of Franconia and seeing this bird and going out with his tiny little binoculars with a crosshair on them. And I think that he's just trying to surreptitiously move us into bird watching Mm. territory. I am, yeah. Absolutely right. How are you, James? Oh, that was obviously seamless. Um, (laughs) um, I don't, I don't. Well, how was your week? Yeah, that's the actual question. Oh, yeah. so I don't think I told this story before. I'm not sure, but at one of the uh, hotels we were staying at recently, um, I had my AirPods in, and for once I was listening to music very loud um, because I was trying to build myself up before giving one of the talks. I don't like to talk about them. And, and yes, 
Was this the time you farted and there was someone behind you? Is this a different Yes, time? have I said that? I think so. Well, we're both aware of it, okay. but you might have told us Any, Anyway, so I had my headphones I had my headphones on and Alex has obviously just ruined the story if, if it hasn't been on the podcast. It's probably has. But because I was listening full blast to my headphones and lost myself in the moment, I let out what I could only imagine because I couldn't hear it was the most sonorous and robust fart that's ever been released in the history of humankind and then turned around to find somebody was stood about three feet behind me, which obviously was embarrassing. But yet yesterday, I think it was yesterday, I've doubled up on that and I was coming down in the lift in this hotel and as I got down to the ground floor, just as the door started to open, I let out a Shafted. huge burp, like a ridiculous burp. And of course, somebody was immediately outside the door so i burped in their face as the lift doors opened what about the cleaning woman in the toilets in glasgow didn't you oh no that, that was just that was just a loud chog i was chogging away and she was obviously still outside cleaning oh okay i mean it's not just, let's, wanking, let's is... talk about james's body body i thought there was releases. more to it than that I no 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 it was, i just i just think no, well god it doesn't matter yeah. carry on yeah yeah okay um we went down to a gig in london uh, to see our friend Milo's band, mm, Who Body How? Yeah. And it was at the O2 uh, Academy in Islington. And I proved, Alex, that we've probably reached Z-list celebrity level. Mm. Maybe maybe below Z, Hello. because it's the first time really we've been out since the podcast became you know, more than 12 listeners. And three people recognised us, didn't they? Well, you. Well, you were at least recognised by one. And somebody came over and actually said, you're, you're the ADHD guy. Yeah, oh my God, you're the ADHD guy. Yeah. Um, and obviously, I mean, she it's... thought it was you, Al. <laughs> she was really People excited. People used to do that all the time. She and, and she was, yeah. she was, she was so lovely. She was saying, you know, the podcast had been great, and her, and her friends, who many of them think they've got ADHD, listen to it. And she was just really grateful. And there was someone else that, you know, uh, yes, Alex. That's lovely. No, oh, you've done it. <laughs> I know. I, I like doing it. <laughs> don't, you, I don't like it. I was going to say, did they realise it was you when you didn't tell them a boring statistic about suicide rates? <laughs> they also they also checked a mirror that was next to me, and when they realised it wasn't a reflection, they, yeah. they knew they had the right one. Yeah, yeah. And then afterwards, actually, as we left, and I'm not going to give the specifics of this because I don't want to, to to release you know some of this information. But after we got, I got a message on Instagram, and it just said. Um, I'm kind of involved with um, the O2 Academy at Islington, and I saw you. He said, I could tell it was you from the back of your head, you and your wife. And I just wanted to say, again, it's amazing what you do, et cetera. And I'd love to, you know, love to come have a drink. And it was just, it was kind of weird in a way to have three people in one night recognize me for this because we still think this is just us talking, don't we? Yeah. Yeah. You, you don't think anything of it, do you? It's weird. No, it's, it's, it's kind of, it's, yeah, it's kind of it's it's maddening. Anyway, that was my week. When we when we did the Birmingham talk and people in the in in the crowd were laughing and repeating back words mm. that we use on this that was it was wonderful and loud and that was a real shock for me, a real shock that people actually listened to this nonsense. Yeah. It really was. Right. Oh, as always, I got to ask you what stupid thing you've been doing this week, instead of what you were supposed to be doing, or in Sam's case, answer a random question. James, what have you been up to? <laughs> um, I think the main thing would be um, IKEA furniture. So as, as I said, we went to IKEA and we were, we were stood behind three people walking slowly, shoulder to shoulder, and we couldn't oh. get past. But we we decided to, to buy some furniture for the house. And... We like going to IKEA in general. I mean, I struggle because obviously Mrs. ADHD has to touch and describe everything, and there's a lot I like of stuff. Like reading things out. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff in IKEA. So every single thing, she'll read out the name and touch it to feel what the texture is. So it takes it takes a while. And <laughs> when we got home, I immediately, obviously, impulsively, right, I've got to put all this together because I, you know, I bought it and I can't wait. I put it together now. I've, I've literally never ever in the history putting together flat pack furniture managed to get it right in a, in a single time that i've done it. i always at least get one thing wrong and it's one thing visibly wrong as well it's not something inside a drawer it's something outside where i've screwed the, uh, the outside on the on the inside and the inside on the outside it's always wrong and this again spe speaks to metacognition because i never think when i start i always get this wrong i'm going to take my time 
and double check maybe with somebody else and, and, and maybe even watch a video online on how to do this. No, I just think fucking go for it. And I put together this chest of drawers and I was so proud, Alex. I was so proud because I took, a, I, t- I did it as slowly as I could. And I was, I had the right tools and I just thought I've got the, I was almost, you know, tears of joy until I started fitting the drawers and thought, hang on, these, these drawers don't fit. There's only room for four of them. And then went, it's upside down. The very, very first instruction of the direction in which to put the sides of this chest of drawers, I didn't pay attention to. The very first instruction, and then everything afterwards obviously was fucked. And I've stuck the feet on so strongly, I can't really take them off without ripping the... Anyway, it's upside down. It's a conversation piece now. Not a conversation I want to have. No, normally I do the exact, obviously I do the exact same thing. I have a wife that doesn't let me now and that she, she watches like Ding. a little hawk. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so that was, that was, that's what I've been doing instead of what I should be doing. What about you, Alex? Oh, plants, buying plants that I'm going to kill. I, I, I love, love the idea of being able to keep house plants and do gardening and all. Just can't, can't do it, can't keep them alive. I, Don't then. I bet. <laughs> Yeah, but I love I love the existence. What I'm doing this time, what I've got is I've got the Google Assistant thingy to ding me uh, hey. in the morning, just 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 before, just for the kids go out the door for school and kindergarten. Mm. It's quite a boring time anyway, where you can't uh, time. Don't know what to do because you can't start anything because they've got to leave. So I, I've got a, a dingling there to tell me to go more to the buggers. <laughs> it's not going to work. I'm going to kill them. But yeah, yeah dingling, dingling. That's the official name. Don't don't start this shit with me. Anyway, that's the stupid thing I've been doing. I don't need to do. Spent a fucking fortune on them as well. What about you, Sam? Stupid thing. I can't remember what's happened this week, so I don't have my usual list. The only thing I can remember is this week when I went onto campus. I remembered my car park pass and fob this time, Way. but I forgot the key to my office, the pass to get in the building, and my laptop. Um, so I had to go back home again. So I should have been working on threes, campus. Then. Had to work at home. Yeah, no, that's embarrassing for you. Yeah, I think Alex has you talked were... about this, but I think the, the the number of things you have to remember, the more things you have to remember for a task, the more obviously the more likely it is that one of them is not going to get remembered. That one of them will just slip off that list of stuff, and and you end not taking it with you. I have yeah. the same bag. Anyway. I, I, I literally, I have a bag that, I that has everything in it. Oh, yeah, I do. What with you? Like, oh, wow. Yeah, but I guess you work from home and you've got me. That's very, very difficult. It just is fundamentally difficult. It's not a surmountable hurdle for people with ADHD. And we have to accept, mm. emotionally accept it and, yeah, I know. not beat ourselves up. Anyway, That's thanks tough. for that, both. We're taking a break. In part two, we'll take questions and thoughts from the ADHD Adult UK community. Well done. On Radio Thanks. 4, Alex apparently. Alex just talked over me. <laughs> or, or hadn't right. finished. Alex, hi. Hi. What's up? Hello, Governor. Jesus, already. Will you be my balance? Something wrong with it? No, that was a joke. Welcome back to episode 89 of the ADHD Adults. This is the extra special Thursday one, the first ever 18th version on the Thursday, as always in part two, we're taking questions from the community, whether you contact at the ADHD adults on Twitter, Facebook, MySpace, Instagram, Pigeon Post, or anything else, but preferably on Discord, ask us a question, we'll try and answer it. First question, as always, folks, from Jiska, which is quite a cool name, no uh, vowels. I asked this one on a different channel, but realised this is actually the place for it. I also ended up RSDing and deleting my question because it's my first day on the server and after four hours, no one had replied, self face That breaks me. I'm so sorry. Here's the question. I've been talking to friends about things we've said impulsively to other people, which objectively are pretty dickish, but which have hurt people in a way we would never have attended, but that we can't take back and they won't forgive. The thing I wonder is... Is it ever okay to blame impulsively saying something dickish on the ADHD? Instinctively, I feel it isn't because you should own your dickishness and just accept if someone wants to block you from their life. But how much is it also beyond your control? 
Should it be a card you can hold up when you want to apologise, or does that dilute accountability? What a brilliant and cerebral question. Mm. Fucking brilliant. Um, I'm going to come at Sam. Just personal experience. What, what, what's, your, what's your immediate thought on that? My immediate thought is not to blame the ADHD. I, I never have. I think it's... <laughs> Because you, you you know you've heard if you've heard somebody, I think they don't want an excuse, do they? They just want to hear you say, "I'm so sorry that I hurt you. I didn't mean to." And you know, you, it's all right, I think, to say sometimes I say things impulsively because of my ADHD, but I really didn't mean to hurt you, and I'm really sorry for that, and I can't take it back, and I wish I could. I wouldn't blame my ADHD. You can blame part but, of it. Effectively, in that sentence, you well, you didn't blame, but you. I, my answer to this will reflect this. You did say, I'm so sorry, but I've got ADHD and... I know, I wouldn't actually say that, but people do. <laughs> and that's okay. But yeah, I wouldn't. I'd just say, I'm so sorry I was a dick. I didn't mean to hurt you and I feel really shit. Okay. What about you two? Uh, uh, James. Which one first? You? Because obviously when you say to, when you say to two James. people... <laughs> what, I, what, I so really... is, what I would say is is that we, we say this a lot adhd is a reason not an excuse and equally if you're not sure if you said something because of your lack of cognitive inhibition because you couldn't stop the impulse to say that ask yourself now would i say that thing and if now after the event you think no i wouldn't say that thing then it's likely that that was a lack of cognitive inhibition you couldn't control that impulse and therefore adhd is the reason you said that thing it's not an excuse, but there are reasons that we do stuff. And it is okay to apologize and say, I'm so sorry, I shouldn't have said that. It was just a thought that popped into my head and I couldn't stop that thought. Mm. Because sometimes with ADHD, you can't stop a thought turning into, into words. It's okay to say sorry, and it, but it's okay to frame that in the reference of, I've got ADHD and sometimes I do things I don't want to. Mm. What about you, Al? I really like it. I'll, I'll, I'm going to say what I, I, what everyone says to, to when they read your jokes, James, that you've written, which is, I wouldn't open with it. I, <laughs> I wouldn't start. I wouldn't start with ADHD. I'd start with a, an apology like Sam's. My personal apology is, I'm sorry if you felt offended. I know, but you <laughs> no, fucking no, I, hate it when you yeah. do that. <clears throat> Yeah, I don't. I would. I only do it as a joke. Obviously, no, absolutely <laughs> a culpa. And I, I, what the only thing I would argue, Jessica, is that when you're, everything you said is true, except for the bit about which people won't forgive. I think that is a mm. thought, not necessarily a fact. And I think people are remarkably forgiving if they're given the power and control. So what I would do, what I choose to do, and I do fuck up all the time, of course, do every day, is give back the power control. Say, look, I, I, I've messed up here. I would really, I'm asking for a favour, and that fa favour is forgiveness for the thing I've said. I can't unsay yeah. it, but I can, I can say I didn't mean it, and I can say that it was impulsive and it was stupid. I think if there is, if it opens up a conversation, then I would explain about how thoughts come out with ADHD sometimes, and if it happens again. I'd appreciate being told straight away that I've that I've done it because I often ask for that feedback and and it, it helps. That's that's all I would say really. It it, it is it, it is a bit of a card and I sometimes do use it, but I'm not sure. Mm. I wouldn't start with it. That's what I think. Yeah, Great it does. I mean, it doesn't Brilliant. matter to them why you said it. They just want to hear you say that you're sorry, don't they? Okay, we'll move on to question two, which comes from Mr. Glenn on Discord. With the hyperactive part in ADHD, does that mean every part of our brain function can be hyperactive at times? For example, our amygdala could be hyper one day, which might cause us to be super anxious and fearful with the world around us. Hyper fearful, say. We'll start off with Alex. What do you think? It's a really good question. We don't know is the is the, the basic answer. We know the amygdala is affected. Not every region of the brain is definitely affected. It's just a really, really great question. And who was it? Who asked it? Can you remember? Mr. Glenn. Mr. Glenn, uh, Mr. Glenn, go into neuroscience because you need to be asking those questions. You know, go and do because we we want to know the answer to those things as well. Um, it's eminently possible. Some people talk about hyperactivity as hyperkinetic, which I am, but we know it isn't just that. A lot of people internalize that to the things you've described. Um, 
feeling like you're thinking quickly isn't actually the same as thinking more quickly. We, in fact, don't think more quickly than other people. We tend to think more slowly because we we task switch all the time in our brains and that there's a little gap. So um, we just we, we think about lots of different things because we can't maintain <laughs> uh, attention. I was going to say erection then, accidentally. Mm -hmm. yeah. Stupid brain, mind wandering. What What about you, Jim? Bob, job, Bob, job, Jim. Yeah. So what I'll say is that there's no one part of the brain that regulates any one thing, and it's the same with emotions. So the amygdala does generally tend to regulate and process negative emotions like fear, anxiety, aggression, etc. But it works in concert with the hippocampus, with the parietal lobe, with the prefrontal cortex, and we know that the prefrontal cortex, the parietal lobe, and and the amygdala are different in general in, in different scanning studies in the brains of people with ADHD. And they are, if you like, deficient. So they are anatomically different and functionally different. But weirdly, the hippocampus is bigger. So it's thought that this is due to a compensatory response. And the hippocampus is more to do with linking kind of memory to emotion. And what, what it happens is in those networks, they don't communicate properly. So on some days, different events, different external stimuli can make you react differently because the way in which you process an external event emotionally then the way in which you turn that that stimulus into an emotional response both sides of that are dysregulated so on some days you might respond overreact some days you might underreact some days it might be fearful some days you might have no response whatsoever because it's a little bit like a computer where it's it's not wired in the same way as a normal computer. So when you run software, it's going to glitch. But is yeah, every so part of the brain hyperactive at times? No, no, it's what James is saying no. actually is true. Okay, isn't so it? no then, Mr. Glenn. <laughs> it's, we don't know which bits are and which bits aren't, but what James is saying, a lot of it's more answer, disordered. Yeah. It is. The answer, yeah, probably, yeah. I mean, yeah. If, yeah. You, if you want to just answer every question with one word from now on, then part two of this podcast oh, will God. be significantly shorter. Actually, if, you, if you want to the you want talk about activity, <laughs> if you want to talk about activity, then general activity in the higher level thinking areas of the brain is reduced compared to yeah. the areas of brain, the brains of uh, people without ADHD. So it's a no, then, Mister Glenn. It's disor more disordered than hyperactive, probably in terms of brain activity. No, then. <laughs> Just, 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 oh. Jesus. Okay. What's with all the questions? Um, I've got a question. Well, it's not mine. Hi, Sam. Okay. I know you have zero editorial rights, but do manage the socials. So I was wondering if you, I mean, I just answer messages, really. Um, so I was wondering mm. if you could answer a question for me. So when I watch TV programs such as EastEnders and other shit soaps, I do find two things. Firstly, I find myself getting really annoyed and frustrated at drawn out storylines where I can see the plot between characters, but the characters themselves cannot seem to see what is coming up and I lose my patience and my brain switches off. The second thing is that I often feel the emotions of characters really strongly and often find myself feeling really anxious, like when Denise almost cheated on Jack, I physically felt her guilt. Whoops, sent by accident. My question is this, is this an ADHD thing or maybe just that it possibly triggers an emotional response from a similar personal experience? Many thanks in advance, Donna from Maidstone. P.S. I bloody love listen, listening every week. Yes, even twice. Keep up the good work and I'll see you at the talk in London. See you there, Denise. Exciting. Uh, have, no. have you asked that just, just because you know that you can Absolutely. spot every single plot Absolutely. twist? We call it jeddying after dad, jeddy. You spot every single plot twist in a program or a film and say, this is going to happen, and I can't. I can never yes. spot anything. Yes, and I the reason I've put this on here is because I responded to this and I wanted to check that my response was right, <laughs> which I probably should do more often, to be fair. <laughs> but I said that, um, obviously, I've been referred for um, ASD, and ADHD people have a lot of ASD traits. And I think for me, part of this is I like to spot patterns and I can see patterns. And and obviously, TV programs and, and films are really formulaic, especially soaps. So you can see this shit coming a mile off, even if other people can't, because our brains like spotting patterns and saying, oh, that's what's going to happen here. And then the ADHD part of the brain goes, oh, I'm bored with it. I know, I know what's going to happen. I'm bored. And then kind of switches off. And then I think the empathy thing is an ASD thing as well that you you can feel empathy differently. And I think you can be over, over empathetic. And I just wondered what the two of you thought. Do you know, 
Do you know the film Train Spotting, Al? Do you remember the choose yeah. the choose life monologue? When Sam talks on no. this podcast, I almost feel like it's the choose life monologue from Train Spotting because it just she yeah. doesn't stop; it just goes and goes and but goes. There was a point to that one. Yeah, that, that, that's yeah, true. Which is <laughs> unusual. No, she does, and and I've I've said it to Sam before that I really ah oh, sorry I really like how how she how she writes her brain works because she often has three interwoven threads in the monologue. Mm. It's I, I would love to transcribe it because it it reads well as well when you when you do Facebook posts. Uh, to, just just to be clear, Sam, when you're talking about your ASD traits, spotting those patterns and things, absolutely right. But but other everyone pattern spots as well. So if so, this was Donna, not Denise. That was the character having an affair. Yes. And Donna from Mason sees it. It's not saying she has a ASD traits in any sense. No, no, not at all. Something else. No, could but could be anything. But yeah, we. That the first thing you're absolutely right. If you've got ADHD and you're watching something and you know what's going to happen, you don't get short-term emotional reward for it, and that's us fucked. That is classic. You can reframe pretty much everything you do with short-term emotional rewards, right? Uh, so this is, but this is what interests me. And I know we are all different. We talk about being neurodiverse in a neurodivergent population, but I'm either as thick as a stone. Or, we can stop there. Yeah, we can just stop there. Yeah, I I cannot. So I don't. So the film uh, was it Arrival by Denny Villeneuve. I don't, I don't want to give the plot away if you've not seen it, but it was right at the end that I went to Sam. Oh my God, it's whatever. And she went, Yeah, ten minutes in. I, I I even said that to you, and I wasn't listening. I cannot see any. Even, and I'm so proud when I see the most obvious of plots. But equally, Alex, to speak to that. I'm one of the few people with ADHD that can't just sit and watch television or films for hours, particularly when I'm in a bad place. But I love, love, and this relates to Donna's question, watching stuff I've watched before. I find there's safety in watching It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia for the sixth time round, the the US office for like the tenth time round, community. When I watch those programs, it's safe. And the second thing that Donna asked, which we haven't really covered, is, is that... You know, if the characters feel strong emotions, it makes her anxious. I'm the same. The reason we avoid really brilliant new television is I can't handle it. I can't mm. handle the, the tumult and the anxiety. This this isn't just you. This is there's two really interesting things happening at the moment. One is um lockdown and the pandemic mm. and Ukraine seems to have really, really affected people emotionally and they're finding, you know, stresses through the roof, L lots of even like teenage, so anorexia, depression, all those kinds of things. And the other one is just r reported research on what humans think we want and what we actually want. Yeah. Humans enjoy programs when they've had a spoiler more than when they haven't. Mm. And uh... they don't realise it. They think they don't, but they do. And one of the ways you can prove it to yourself is how often you've secretly gone into Wikipedia and looked up the plot and still watched it. What? We, we have you, a lot of people are doing this. They're looking at, they're watching a TV series and then they'll go on Wikipedia and they'll, they'll go through and look at what happened and then carry on watching it. Or, or you know, IMDB or something like that. To yeah, find Wikipedia out has happened. a list of all the episodes. If you're catching up with something oh, new, it'll have, it'll have a, a pray seal or something. Yeah. I think we think we want this this non spoiler thing, and our brains often our emotions don't. They I get kind of that like in a way actually. No... I, I, sorry, I always say to James no. that I'd love a program where it's just a bunch of lovely <laughs> friends and they go around doing lovely things together and so nothing true. bad ever happens to it's them. So I would love to watch that. I'd love it. They just have lovely times. <laughs> they get on really well and they just do lovely things together. I'd love that program. I mean, that was honestly. Friends, I'm, I was, I'm yeah, watching I the Last of Us. No, but with less I'm homophobia watching... and. <laughs> I'm watching The Last of Us at the moment, and honestly, it'd be much better without the zombies. I just watched them too having a laugh. <laughs> it's perfect. It is. So okay. to, to answer your it question, Donna. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in, we forgot what you were talking yeah, in about. The, in the interest of my time being too precious to spend with YouTube, we'll take a break and we'll be back in, back in part three to talk about uh, further thoughts on this week's theme. See you in a bit. Okay. Spunk tippics. Welcome, Welcome back to part three of episode 89 of the ADHD Adults podcast. Just before we get into further 
thoughts on the theme just to remind everybody that the live podcast event is coming up in london at the genesis cinema march the 22nd it's going it's not going to be recorded so if you're in the room you get to enjoy or not probably um a live experience which is going to be probably just as bad as most of the podcast worse. episodes yeah. or worse yeah, yeah. So in part three, as usual, we, we try and expand upon our thoughts on the theme, which was for this week, um, how to talk about your ADHD to other people. So we'll start with Alex. What made you choose the last idea for a theme? Um, yeah, I mean, we, we get asked a lot, don't we? That's the, the thing. This is you saying a lot of people have asked, let's do this. But it's also really, really important. Feeling it, that empowerment to talk about it has changed my life and it comes in maybe one percent from james helping me to do that at 99 99 percent <laughs> let's be honest but i think i always wanted to and i was i was frightened i, I got loads of shit advice from lots of other people not to oh don't yeah. god don't be afraid be afraid mm. there's the advice fuck that um I'm lucky, I'm massive, check your privilege, really important. I have that privilege and therefore I'm doing this. If you don't have the privilege, if you think it will affect you too negatively beyond what you need and your values, yeah, don't do it. Talk to us instead or talk to your community mm. instead. But that was why, James, is because it, it has helped people and that has helped me. You know how people who rescue dogs say, oh, in a way they rescued me and you think, fuck <laughs> off. It's a, it's a bit like that. <laughs> Yeah, I get that. What about you, <laughs> Samantha? I don't know how many times I have to say this, but I have no editorial rights whatsoever in this podcast. I did not choose the theme. I'd how about you, James? Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Um, a little bit, a little bit of what else said. We get asked a lot. Mm. It's, it's probably the thing that different variations of we've been asked the most of, of all the topics we've been asked about sometimes it's to my partner sometimes it's to my family sometimes to my friends but it's really really important and partly because i, I don't understand it so everyone can hear that by the way oh, there's, sorry. A micro, there's a microphone yeah. eight inches away from your yeah. your tablet right there container but, yeah, but anyway it doesn't matter you know it's only it's only a, a, an audio and visual medium just taking my top up okay brilliant um forgot where i was yeah there's part of me that doesn't understand it because we talk about rsd a lot and my rsd is kind of weird and specific so for example when i message alex at the weekend with something about the podcast and i see two blue ticks and he doesn't reply i forget he's got kids and a family and a life and he's and, he and, he's, and he's doing so well that's what i think yeah. And and, and I just see blue, two blue ticks, and then ten minutes later, check back and think he's fucking seen that. You know, by he's, telling him this, he's going to do. We've that talked even about more. it. We've talked about it. So don't worry. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I see two blue ticks and think he's fucking seen that. And ten minutes later, he's definitely fucking seen that, and he's not replied. And I get really kind of okay. Well, obviously, you know, he's not interested, or now he hates me, or he's I don't know. But but he learned, I think, or he reacted this weekend. He did a thumbs up response oh he told me that that's the worst response no to give. no but for me that that was all i needed Which is the point just just an yeah. acknowledgement not just that i've read it but okay right. but i don't this is exactly get rsd Sorry, go. go on i, no, I go was going to say this is exactly the point sam which is i didn't do a thumbs up because i thought it was dismissive and it's all james needed right. to feel valued it also shows people behind the curtain of our actual personalities you know because i make james say these horrible things on the podcast people think he's incredibly confident and you know doesn't feel rsd when actually he's, it's, it's really quite crippling for him and i exploit it mercilessly he does exactly <laughs> but that and that's the weird thing and that's coming back to the, the topic because my rsd is so specific in certain areas and because for some reason i can't explain it if i could bottle this and sell it i would be a millionaire I don't give a fuck what anybody thinks about me, apart from you know the two people in this room and a handful of other people. That's why I can stand up in front of a room and people mm. and talk. It's why I can say horrible things on this podcast and, and generally not care about it. It's why I could, right from the start of being diagnosed with ADHD, stand up and say, I, I can't do that. I've got ADHD. You'll have, to, you'll have to change what you're doing for me. It's how I can... Oh, yeah say things and privilege and, and social platform and power they are important but equally weirdly i've never cared not in the last 10 years and therefore that means for me 
whilst I can kind of understand that people can struggle largely because of, of what we talked about, the stigma and the myth that's out there and people not knowing, I get that that's difficult, but because I can't put my, genuinely put myself in somebody else's place and think like they think, I struggle to, to cognitively accept what it must be like to, to not be able to just say, well, I can't do that because my ADHD, you, you're the one that's got to adapt, not me. Wow. And that's why I, th I think it was interesting. Wow. wow. So you have no empathy. No, I do have empathy, sweetie. But I, I because I am so strongly directed down one path, it's right. very difficult for, for me to imagine what it is actually feels like to, to think I human. Uh, yeah, to be human, yeah. Because I'm because I'm a vampire, exactly. It was ages ago, wasn't it, yeah. for you? Hundred and two hundred years. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, moving on, was there any thought or tip from the theme that you forgot to say, Sam? Um, yeah, I had a little thing. And when I first started telling people um, that I had ADHD, I had people saying, but we like you as you are. We don't want you to change. Don't take medication. We, do, we don't want you to change. And I think, I think they were trying to show that they loved me and accepted me as I am. But then I realized that because I'd masked so effectively and I'd hidden my struggles so much, I hadn't told anybody how much I was struggling, people at work, anywhere, they weren't aware. So for them, they didn't want me to change. They thought I was great. And they were like, well, why do you need a diagnosis? And why would you want to change? And it just really confused them when I disclosed it because they just thought, I don't understand what was wrong. So I think because that's something to bear in mind as well, that when you've hidden it so well, people are going to think, well, why do you need a label? Why do you need that when you, you, you're good already? And I think as well, when you disclose something like this to people, they don't know how they're going to react and, and they don't know how to take it. So maybe they do need a bit of time. You know, you, you need to tell them and then give them a bit of time to process it and then come back later and speak to them about it then. Because it's a lot to just come up with somebody that thinks you're brilliant and you're well adjusted and you come up and say, I've got ADHD. I'm going to start taking meds. And they're like, what? But I, lo I love you as you are. And it's a lot for them to process. That's all I thought. So good. That is so, I hear that so often from clients when I'm coaching that their partners hate it, partly because their life was a lot easier when you were sad, but they didn't know you were sad and they kind of don't want you to be, yeah. but, but at the same time, they do have to adjust and it is yeah. work, you know? And, yeah. And, and actually yeah. I've said to James, cause James, before he was diagnosed with bipolar and ADHD, used to we used to do things all the time with loads of people and he was just pretending that he was okay with it you know wasn't even letting on to me and when all this all changed I was like oh, I kind of preferred it when you just sucked it up and we went along and did a load of things Ding. but obviously it was much worse for him mentally so you yeah. have to kind of accept that and move on you do and we have to talk about this don't we when we're we're outing ourselves with ADHD and we are unmasking a little bit we're asking people to 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 meet us halfway when they were fine. What's that old, lovely phrase that's also horrible, which is to um, to the oppressor, equality looks like oppression. Well, it's a, a similar thing here, isn't it? To the to the person without yeah. the problem, someone revealing problems it's, looks it's like- it's oh, maybe right, to it. them. Sorry. Yeah. It's hurtful maybe to them to learn that all those good times they had with you were actually distressing for you. And, and actually it was, it was a lot of effort for you and you went home and were physically drained from it all, but they had a great time with you. So they've got a lot to process as well from this. No, that's really good. Sorry, oh, um, uh, James. <laughs> <laughs> um, the first thing I would say is that when it comes to communication, the, one of the biggest mistakes people make is they talk first rather than listening. And listening is actually the most important part of communication. So if there is somebody in your life, whether it's a partner or a parent or a work colleague, get them to talk about it first. Ask them why it is that they struggle to accept your ADHD. Ask them why it is that um, they might think the things that they think. Because if you start from a point of not knowing where they're coming from, if somebody just says, well, I don't think it's real, and you start saying, well, it is real, mm -hmm. you don't know why they think that. Ask them, why do you think it's not real? And they might say, well, you know, I, I, well, there's no test for it. And then you might say, well, is there a test for anxiety? And then they might think, oh, well, no, there isn't. And they might see that they're arguing from a, a false point. Often, and there's evidence from this, I remember from the time of, of George Bush Jr.'s political reign, they did a study where they got some of his supporters and they gave them false um, policies of his. They were all false. And they said, yeah, they're great. They're brilliant. 
And then when they said, yeah, we made those up, they're not his policies, the majority went, no, they are his policies and they're brilliant and we, we definitely back them. So if somebody and has... And then when they showed them the proof, they backed yeah, him even more. Exactly. So if you... If you if somebody has a position and you just try and kind of argue on a purely no, no, this is a fact. Here's the evidence base. Sometimes the emotional argument or the emotional conversation is more powerful because if people have a bias and that bias might not be deliberate, but it might just be this is what I've learned, and you just say no, here's some facts, and sometimes it can it can reinforce that position. So ask them why they think something. Ask them their opinion and listen, and then use that as a way to help explain. What you're doing, and just really quickly, uh, a couple of people came up after the, uh, the talk last night in Bristol, and it was quite emotional. One of them was talking about how you know, the people that they live with really struggle, and they know that they've got ADHD, really struggle with the, their symptoms. And we had a good chat about it. And fundamentally, I said, Well, if you've explained yourself and if you've said that these are things that you struggle with and they still have that problem, that's on them, it's not on you. And don't let other people who refuse to accept your traits and behaviors diminish you. If, you if you've really tried, if you've explained how difficult it is, if you explain the distress it causes you and you still get, yeah, but you haven't done the washing up, then fuck them. Yeah, they can fuck off. They can get in the fucking sea because actually that's on them. It's not on you if they don't actually accept you when you've explained yourself and, and you don't want people in your life that don't accept you and are cunts like bad cunts, not good cunts yeah. like us. Anyway, Although, what about you? The, the, the caveat to that is that people need the power to change their minds, and you can't change somebody else's mind ever the way no, you want it to fuck change. Them off. They, only they can. No, not fuck them off. Um, if if you need them to change, you need them in your life. Then you can you ha you need to find a way that they have the power. That's he man, I think. No, I, no, I, I get, I get, I, yeah, I get, I do get that. Al, but if you if you've exhausted every avenue and someone still diminishes you on a, on a regular basis, like mm -hmm. if it's someone you live with, and every day they kind of have a go at you for being ADHD, there has to be a point where you stop putting your mental health and self-esteem at risk because somebody is not willing to accept the person that you are, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. That's not unreasonable. I guess it's, it depends on the individual situation, what your needs are. It's a bloody yeah. minefield is what it is. What about you, Alex? Was there any thought on the theme that you forgot to say? There is. Thanks for repeating the question. I had forgotten. There's a couple of things. One is, um, you know, when we said that you, you, you can't blame the ADHD when you've fucked up, essentially. I think it was Jessica mm. said that. You can't externally, but inside your head, blame the shit out of it. Um, yeah. it because A, because it's true. And B, there yeah. are loads of things that aren't your fault. The the not There are loads of things that are, but it's okay to, it's not even blame. It, it, it explains it. It's yeah, so and it helps you to that. forgive yourself. That's a good point, actually. Yeah, it's it it is really important. The other one is this. I don't know if this is just me. I don't think it is. Have, do you have that thing where you've got like in a relationship, you've said something, you've explained something to your partner six times about it doesn't matter what it is, and then someone at work's told them, and they come back and say, "Oh, I've heard this new thing," and they absolutely get it. And <laughs> oh. <laughs> I do that all the time with Jane. Oh, I've just heard this. And he's going, I've, I've literally told you that every day of your life since I've met you. you yeah, but they said you know, it. this so ADHD. It. And I think partly because it's a compliment. It's because in a relationship, your partners aren't you. It's like, you know, it's not like being siblings. No, because because it's that's a relationship. But it's you, you're equal <laughs> in a good partnership. And so it's harder to take, you know, instruction. It's not as novel, it's not as interesting. So I would say that if you are struggling to explain, find some. This is just an advert for the podcast. Clearly, find something that explains it in a way that that person might connect with. If they like swearing and inappropriate, unprofessional, poorly delivered psychoeducation, recommend. Which they, if they don't. Yeah, which they won't. Give them one of the American ones where they go, hey, guys, are you pumped to have ADHD? Well, join me to find out why it's just of power. And like yeah, but Barack then they'll Obama come back going, had... ADHD is the strength. <laughs> yeah, why yeah, are but you if they understand it's strength? It... Yeah, you lucky bastard. I wish I had a 5% smaller brain. So you, but but may, maybe <laughs> my advice is to bring in a third party to your relationship. <laughs> and yeah, so th those are the two things, really. That's what I wanted to say. Any 
Has James already done his? Have you done yours, James? What was yeah, yours? I did mine. I did mine, yeah. It was very powerful and moving. Yeah, obviously, because you instantly forgot. In that case, in the spirit of this being Blooming Thursday, that was episode 89 of the ADHD Adults. And it was the very first Thursday expedition of the ADHD Adult podcast with the number 18 attached. After Monday's episode on explaining ADHD to people. If you like this... And want to get involved, contact us on all the socials, on the Discord, at the ADHD Adults, and Twitter, and Instagram, and Facebook, maybe. Anywhere in the metaverse. I don't know what that is. We hope to see you there. Bye, all. Bye. See you later.